Welcome to another episode of Simmer Clips. Today's question is inspired by our course server-side tagging in Google Tag Manager. And let's take a look at what the question is. How do I proactively monitor my server-side tagging setup so that I'm alerted in case there are uptime issues? So this is kind of a fundamental question. When you set up server-side tagging in the cloud or in a custom server cluster, you need it to keep running. Like if there's any downtime, for example, your endpoint will be unresponsive and your data collection will come to a halt. So in this topic or in this video, we're going to take a look at some of different strategies in the Google Cloud Platform specifically for managing uptime of your resources. And much of this has to do with cloud monitoring. So we're going to build alert policies in cloud monitoring that will send us an email or even a Slack message in case there are issues with your infrastructure, such as a downtime over the last five minutes or an increase in error responses or something like that. And we're going to take a look at a couple of different things you can do. But ultimately, it's up to your organization and how you organize your cloud projects, because there are different thresholds to consider and you need to discuss with your cloud engineers in case you already have some type of standard for alerting policies in place, just to avoid false positives as well and to improve the signal to noise ratio of those alerts. So we're going to start with looking at health checks. Now health checks are built in mechanisms in your cloud run uh, setups in your cloud run instances, which automatically pull the cloud run instance to see if it's up and running. And if the health check ever returns a negative response, so a past a certain threshold, so for example, uh, uh, an error indicating that the health check didn't work, then the container instance will automatically be shut down and a new instance will start up. So this is in case your in something goes wrong and your instance goes stale, the health checks make sure that you always have an up and running setup. So to do this, so now I expect that you already have a cloud run setup up and running. The steps are quite different for App Engine, so it's gonna so if you're still using an App Engine setup, you might want to skip this part about health checks because App Engine actually does those automatically for you. Because the server-side Google Tag Manager App Engine installation does those automatically for you. But with Cloud Run, we're going to go to Cloud Run in the search bar. And then you can set up these health checks and they need to be set up for all of your instances. Now, I typically don't set them up for the preview instance because that's just too much noise. But in case you have a multi-region set up, you're going to want to edit all of your actual production instances. So we're going to start with this single one that we have here. Click it open and then click to edit and deploy a new revision. If you scroll down, you can see that there's already a startup probe running. So this startup probe is done as soon as the container is initially spun up. So its point is to make sure that the container started without an issue. And it's going to wait four minutes for the health check to return a valid value. And it's going to do it with a TCP connection. So if the TCP connection succeeds within the first four minutes, it means that the startup was fine and the probe was successful. If there's a failure, we have a threshold of one. So even one failure is enough. The container is immediately shut down and a new one is started in its place. So if you don't already have a startup probe, you can follow these settings to start to create one. You're going to create a TCP probe on port 8080 with an initial delay of zero. It's going to wait the 240 seconds and just have the one time failure threshold. And the timeout is going to be four minutes as well. So you can create the startup probe with these settings in your production containers. We can also create a liveness check, which is a periodic ping to see if the container is up and running. So we're going to choose a liveness check, an HTTP probe, and it's going to go to the path healthy with the forward slash in the beginning. The healthy path returns a success message if the container is up and running. If the container is not up and running or there are other issues, it's going to return an error status code. So we're going to wait 30 seconds since the startup probe succeeds. Every 10 seconds, the container is going to re receive the health check. And we're going to wait for three consecutive failures, three consecutive error messages before marking the container as unhealthy and spinning up a new one. And the timeout is fine. So now we have our starter probe and our liveness probe. And you can repeat these in all of your production Cloud Run instances. So don't bother with the preview instance. 
the healthiness of that is not as critical as your actual traffic instances. When you're done, scroll down and click deploy to serve the new version immediately. Great, so once we're done, just remember that this is a container-specific health check. It's not a monitoring or alert system. It's just a good precaution to have to make sure that your setup autonomously runs just fine. So now we're gonna jump to the Logs Explorer. So here we're gonna create a new logs-based metric. We're gonna create a custom metric that's specifically looking for errors in our logs. So just to give you an idea of what kind of queries we're gonna be doing, let's expand the query interface. And we're gonna be polling the load balancer. So you could poll individual containers or the cloud run uh, setup in general, but polling the load balancer maybe gives you a bit more granular insight into what's going on because occasionally the load balancer itself is unable to forward messages to the backend. So by adding the alert on the load balancer level, you'll get everything that's passed to the cloud run backends, but you'll also get errors that the load balancer itself emits. So we're going to be looking for resource type equals HTTP load balancer. And the next thing we're going to be looking for are error messages. So we're going to go to HTTP request dot status. And we're going to be looking for errors. So that's anything equal to 400 or higher. So HTTP status code of 400 or higher would indicate an error. Now, if we're just gonna do a query for these, let's see what we're gonna get in response. You can see that there's a lot of weird looking entries. So we have these IP addresses, fab icons, security.txt sitemaps. These are not related to our server-side tagging setup in any way. I don't care about those. So we need to focus on only the errors that actually matter. In our case, we are running a fairly simple Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager setup. So we're gonna be specifically looking for requests that have the Google Tag Manager or the G Tag footprint. If you're using other types of clients, you'll want to add them here as well. And the way we're gonna do this is with a simple pattern match. So we're gonna look for HTTP request request URL. This is the URL of the request itself. And we're interested in a pattern match, so that's equals followed by the tilde. And then in parentheses, we can start adding our patterns. So we're gonna look for gtm.js for cases where the Google Tag Manager web container file fails. Let's add an or there. Then we're gonna look for the Google Tag library. That's basically the path selector for that because it can have multiple different um, path suffixes like JS or destination, but the G tag is always included in those. And then we're gonna add the GA4 request itself, which would be prefixed with slash G slash collect. So now when we look for these, let's run the query again. We can see just one example, because this is a fairly error-free setup, where I tried to look for a container with the ID GTM test and it returned a 400 error. Now that we have tested our query, we can click create metrics. So we're going to create a metric out of these that we can then apply calculations to and aggregations to before creating the alert. So we're going to keep the counter because we're interested in the count of error messages. That's what we'll build our aggregations on. So we're going to go with Google path error status here. You don't have to touch units because we're doing a counter. In case this was a distribution, for example, then we would have a different type of unit here. The scope will be project logs and the query should be automatically copied from the query interface. Let's click create metric to create this into a log based metric. Now that we've built the metric, we can go to the actual most important part of this video, which is cloud monitoring. So in the search bar, let's go to alerting. And this is where we'll create our policies. So each policy represents some type of an alert that we're interested about. And now I'm just going to walk through a number of different policies you might be interested in, uh, just to make sure that you're getting a good uptime check for your cloud run services. So we're going to start by creating a policy. So let's select a metric and we're going to uncheck the active tab. Under application load balancer rule and logs based metrics, you should find your custom metric here. So we're just going to apply that. Now you should see a graph so this just indicates that the query is working. There has been a 
problem or an error, a 400 error most likely for one of those Google paths. So next thing we're gonna be interested in is the rolling window. So we are only interested in the last five minutes and this is a rolling window so it's evaluated all the time for the last five minutes. So for this alert to trigger, we need the error to happen consistently over the last five minutes. We don't care about individual cases or even shorter period of times. If it happens consistently over the last five minutes, it means that there really is a problem with that particular endpoint. And the rolling window function in this case is going to be rate. We're gonna be interested in the rate of those events. So we're gonna it's gonna be as a function of time. We're gonna click next to move to the trigger. And the threshold here is going to be this is now going to depend on how many requests you typically expect in your container. This container isn't particularly burdened, so I'm going to go something like five per second. In case we start getting requests that error out at a rate of five errors per second over the last five minutes by average, then we're going to get the alert. So we are specifically looking for high frequency errors to be alerted about this. So we're going to name this Google path 400 or 500 errors, five per sec over the last five minutes. Then we're going to configure the notifications. So in case you haven't configured any channels yet, you're going to have to click manage notification channels. Here you have options like PubSub, you have SMS, webhooks, you can even configure a Slack channel. In my case, I'm just going to add an email address here and I'm going to name it Team Simmer Alerts. So this notification will be sent to the email address you added up there. Once you see it in the email field, you can close the notification channels and then you can just choose it from the list of available channels after that. Subject line, so we're just gonna repeat the alert condition name. And then the auto close duration just means that the incident itself will close in seven days because when an alert happens, an incident is created that you can then go and check. If you want to add additional documentation into the email, so this could be instructions for the recipient on how to proceed, like should they check service IGTM or something, then you can do that as well. We're gonna name the alert policy and let's just repeat the condition name again. Review the alert and you can just make sure that everything is fine and then just click create policy. So now we have our policy here and we can start building our other policies. So this was our log based metric policy and now we can build some other general utility policies for our server-side tagging setup. And the cool thing is that it comes with a lot of built-in metrics that you can monitor. So we're gonna start with a very simple one. Look for CPU utilization under Cloud Run Revision, and we're gonna choose the container CPU utilization metric. So this includes utilization data from all of your containers. In this case, it shows me different revisions as well, which is not that helpful. But we want to check if the overall container CPU utilization is ever above 60%, which should be the auto scale threshold for a longer period of time. So in case it is over 60% for a longer period of time, it means that something's wrong with auto scaling. Maybe, you, maybe you've come up with your maximum instances already. So you'll need to quickly run to Cloud Run and add additional instances. We're gonna keep the rolling window at five minutes and then we're gonna flatten our time series by editing the across time series and going with the mean. So this takes the mean of all of your CPU utilizations across your containers, and it's gonna count the utilization rate. This way we're avoiding too much noise in our setup by making sure that we have the mean instead of the actual count. And the threshold, we're gonna go with 60%, which should be the auto scale trigger. So if over the last five minutes, the average CPU utilization rate is above 60 across your container revisions, then you're gonna receive the alert. Notifications will again go with Team Simmer alerts. Subject line, we can go with our alert name, which is going to be container CPU utilization over 60% last five minutes. Again, you can add some documentation here if you want. We're gonna use the same alert policy name as our e email subject was. Let's create this. Great, so now we have our second policy here as well. So in addition to the CPU policy, we're gonna be interested to know if our maximum instances limit is approaching. So we're gonna cho choose a metric, and here you're gonna look for instance count. Under Cloud Run Revision Container, choose instance count and apply. 
So now we are interested in all the different revisions because if any one of our Cloud Run setups has is approaching its maximum instance count, we want to be alerted about this. So we're going to be interested again on a five minute rolling window. So if the instances are ever at a critical state over the last five minutes consistently, that's when we'll be notified. And here we're going to choose the threshold. The maximum instance count for our Cloud Run containers is 10. So let's put eight as the threshold value. If we ever have an instance count of eight or more over the last five minutes, then we're going to get the notification because we want to quickly update our maximum instance count to a higher level. You can, of course, tweak these as much as you like. Let's go with the email again. Notification subject line is container instance count over eight last five minutes. And let's name the alert policy the same. And now the last one that we'll do here, feel free to check out all the different metrics that are available for you. But I'm not going to create one for each one of those. We're going to add some ideas into the article that comes with this video. But in this case, one more thing that we're going to be interested in is in the overall latency of our setup. So we're going to look for request latency for our Cloud Run revision. And here you can see that currently the 99th percentile is well below 500 milliseconds as the typical request latency. But we want to be alerted in case the latency goes up quite a bit. So we are going to keep the 99th percentile here, but across time series, we're going to go with the mean again. So we're, we're interested in the mean latency across all of our cloud run revisions, because we want to know if our entire backend setup is becoming unresponsive. And here we're going to go for 2000 milliseconds. So if the latency is ever above two seconds, so two second average response time over the last five minutes, then we're going to be alerted about this. Let's get notified. Email subject is going to be container request latency over two seconds, the last five minutes. And we'll name the policy this as well. Then we're going to click create policy. So now we have four different uptime checks here. We have a CPU utilization check in case the average CPU utilization rate across all our container revisions is over 60%, which should trigger an auto scale, which would then take the average down again because we have more instances. But if it's consistently over 60% over the last five minutes, it means you don't have enough instances to handle the incoming rate. So you might need to check your auto scaling setup. Same thing with the instance count. If we go over eight over the last five minutes, we can expect it might be indicative of there being a huge traffic spike and we need to update our maximum instances to something beyond 10. Now, if your maximum instance count is 20, then this is, of course, not helpful. You need to modify all of these to match your setup. And then we have the overall latency for our setup. If we consistently see a larger than two second latency over the last five minutes, it might mean that there's something wrong in your actual container setup. You are building tags or request setups that just take way too much time to complete, or it could mean that you have an unresponsive endpoint. And then we have our log base metric that checks for errors in particular and sends us an email in case any one of those is met. So as I mentioned, check the article as well for some additional tips and ideas. And if you have any tips or ideas, you can add them to the YouTube video comments or the article itself. But this just goes to show that taking monitoring seriously is one of the things you'll just need to do when you're working with server-side tagging. Luckily, the cloud monitoring makes it really easy to create these metrics because there's a lot of built-in metrics available and suggestions for how to handle those. And you just need to try different things to see what works for your container. Remember also the starter probe and the liveness probe that you can configure in your container instances. And if you haven't done so already, don't neglect billing. So in billing, you can add additional alerts in case you are nearing your budget. So you can set a budget for how much money you are willing to pay for your server side tagging setup. So you can set alerts in case you're reaching that budget, which is also a very good idea to do so that you're not blindsided by a huge credit card bill. But that's it for this question. Again, let me know in the comments if you have additional suggestions or if you have other questions about how to build these monitoring policies.